We have the magic of television. Welcome everyone to episode number two. Here I am again in Buenos Aires and I promise I will show you our Broadway street. The Broadway street in Buenos Aires is called Corrientes Avenue. Why this street is famous? Well, I will show you. I will just rotate the camera again. Thank you everyone for tuning in uh, to this wonderful episode Buenos Aires as we walk around Corrientes Street. This was, uh, a, this is a pleasure for me. Everyone that is tuning in, please say hello. Please say, where are you broadcasting from? Where are you connecting? Hello to the people of America, Canada, uh, Europe. I know it's late, but thank you for supporting this project, this craziness. And uh, I promise I'm not going to eat anything on this episode. I would love to show you. Thank you, Silvana, for your kind words. Oh, Micaela, of course, we are going to talk about soccer. Actually, Micaela, right now, let's talk about soccer right now. It's like soccer is not an, inven an Argentinian invention, it's not even a British invention. If you check things out, the Romanians and the Croatians actually they started to play and kick the ball. The British, what they did is to put some rules and perfection the Romanian or Croatian idea. Thanks to the British that brought the football or, as, or the soccer for the ones in the United States, thanks to them, oh my God, I think they just opened the door. Sorry, I'm interrupting because this is one of my favorite pizza places in the whole world. <laughs> it's called Las Cuartetas and well, you can actually have a lot of pizza over here, but I don't want to just ruin the story of football. So sorry about that. Um, I will I will stop over here because there are many many things I would like to show you. And um, they they brought the, the the soccer over here in the 20th century, and it was at the beginning it was a lot of. Uh, Team. Sorry, it was in the 19th century, even before, because I do remember Gimnasia de la Plata as one of the oldest teams in Argentina. Uh, Agus Pichu, probably you are happy to hear that. And um, then it was River, it was Boca, it was uh, San Lorenzo, which is the Pope favorite uh, team that were here. We Argentinians, we cannot live without soccer. We are very, very passionate about soccer. And if you guess which one is my team, I can give you a present, all right? Just, I give you three options. River Plate, Boca Juniors, or Racing Club. One of them is my team that I support seems the, uh, well, see my, I can't remember actually. And okay, welcome to Corrientes Avenue. And what you have on the screen is the Theater Grand Rex. Hello, Klaas from Denmark. Love to have you. And Tig, Neil, thank you very much. Oh, we have someone from Wales. I love Wales. I was in there in 2014. Wow, in Cardiff, that was incredible. Thank you, thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank you so much. And I have to agree with Rosario that Guerin is one of the other favorite of all Argentinian pizza places. But as I was telling you, the Grand Rex Theatre is one of the uh, best regarding the acoustics. We have a Starbucks coffee, another theatre which is just next door to the uh, Grand Rex. It will call Tavaris Theatre. Las Cuartetas will be my recommendation for everyone who wants to have a good slice of cheesy, oily, extremely fat, pizza <laughs> but remember that I, I was talking to all of you folks about Carlos Gardel right he was born in France and some people said he was born in Uruguay well it's a myth where he was born but this one is the Opera Theater one of the biggest theaters in Buenos Aires hi people say hi hello do you like theater le gusta el teatro Sí, mucho. They love theater. People are very, very kind, very, very nice here in Buenos Aires. 
the opera theater people is where Carlos Gardel started to sing well when it was mainstream and Carlos Gardel is also a symbol of tango he didn't invent tango tango was invented by Im immigrants in the beginning of the 20th century first of all tango was danced by male only a man could dance this sexy kind of dance it was really really great and oh hello people from florida i bet i bet it's warm over there it's getting warmer over there i will take the chance and cross corrientes avenue right now as i'm showing just a big of the obelisk that we are going to see just in a bit because i do remember there is a restaurant with a few uh well statues like uh, cartoons of argentinian traditions and we can see a little bit of food of what we eat or we, what we like to eat in here look at the sign like, like the menu of the day you have it over there quite cheap 380 uh, pesos we have a well, tango player over there playing the accordion we have well another thing that I would like to show you is how beautiful are the signs sometimes uh, of the streets with all these crazy and colors and we call it fileteados fileteados with some brands over there I think I will ask Campari to to give me free Campari for one year after that shot and <laughs> look at this menu for example ladies and gentlemen probably all our traditions pastas because of the Italian immigra immigrants right salads schnitzels we call it milanesas and we are going to talk about inventions right now and milanesas although not an Argentinian invention we invented everything that you can put on top the milanesas uh, therefore we invented the Napolitan Milanesa which is a schnitzel with ham cheese and tomato and a little bit of oregano on top but our diva and the reason many many people comes here is of course the t-bone steak or the Sicilian steak which is in Spanish or in Argentinian the bife de chorizo I have to be very very honest with all of you folks over there I've been in 94 countries and I'm a beef eater a meat eater I love meat and I have to be very honest the Argentinian meat is great don't get me wrong it's really really good but I have eaten great the, the best meat for example in Japan or even in the United States you guys have a lot of good restaurants the thing in here is that it's so inexpensive for like five US dollars you can get a huge piece of Sirleon steak which is really really mental if you um, <clears throat> just uh, compare to the prices of New York City or California even Texas I believe that in Texas you do have a lot of great restaurants a lot of great restaurants that uh, serves food and good food like meat food so but I think you will pay more than 40 to 50 uh, dollars in order to do that. sorry about the wind ladies and gentlemen but we are going Want to say hello to the rest of the planet, para todo el mundo, para todos. River Boca, Boca, Chacarita, vamos ahí San Martín y usted, vamos Chaca, eh. Gracias. De la Florida, gracias. Ahí, the people are very very happy when they see the camp and they want to be live from Buenos Aires to all over the world. It's really really amazing. Thank you, Steffi, for everything. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Thank you, mommy. My mom is here, live with us. Oh my God, I'm so so happy. All right, we have reached the obelisk now, and I have to tell you that the obelisk is not even in the center of anything, um, but it should be in the center of this avenue, which is the 9th of July. Remember, I told you before that the independence of Argentina from the Spaniards took 
six years right six years and let me find a quiet and shady place there we go took six years as we see the subway also um and this this is the the the, the widest ladies and gentlemen the widest street in the world some people especially the people from brazil because they created a highway not an avenue that is the key difference that is called the eje monumental all right and uh, that is twice the, uh, the, the 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 size of the 9 de julio the day of our independence the 9th of july 1816 so this street is 140 meters long i have a question a question to all of you 150 meters is around 560 feet i have a question to all of you watching over there and i want you to tell me yes or no do you think i can cross the street in one time this is the <laughs> crossing the 9th of july street challenge all right and i will go all right if you say yes thank you for having faith in me if you say no well that's more likely what's going to happen uh, i'm just walking really really fast really 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 fast uh, i have 15 minutes I, I don't even cover 30 meters probably because i'm old <laughs> okay it's not possible not possible thank you for the ones who actually believe in me and i will show you around a little bit because in here as you can see we have a beautiful beautiful piece of uh well grass that people used to take pictures ba i mean the back side of course ba for buenos aires over there and over here i can show you around the obelisk square or the republica square as it is the original name imagine that where the obelisk is standing right now before we have a chapel and we are talking about the year 1936 this was the year where the obelisk was created before the chapel was called saint nicholas of bari which is the patron saint of this neighborhood actually the neighborhood that we are walking around is called saint nicholas oh tig i can definitely talk about ushuaia absolutely because you know what it's one of my favorite places not even in argentina in the whole world yes i can definitely uh, wrap up this tour by telling something about ushuaia of course thank you for that i mean i love your feedback i feel like you uh, folks are walking around with me and that makes me really really happy as well after, it's one year since i don't guide on the streets and you folks make this happen thank you very 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 much and i was saying it took uh, 60 days to build this huge limestone obelisk that is completely useless but at in the beginning of course well they are going to paint they're about to repaint the obelisk which is great you can see some stains over there of humidity <laughs> well we are buenos aires right <laughs> i know germán is is the sky the, one of the most beautiful things in buenos aires i be, i believe you do this you believe the same thing so that is the obelisk at, at first people hate it then they love it and we actually say it's the icon of buenos aires hola familia hola all the people over there they want to be on the sandman and the five cousins live streaming and as i'm zooming in can you see that building over there that is the mystery the ministry sorry of work or the yeah and you have a, a sign or a portrait of evita yes evita evita peron one thing that is really really fun is that as now we are facing the south so south is that way and we can see evita talking to the people to, of the north with a very very strict uh, face 
but if you go down around the building you will see Evita smiling Evita Pero will be smiling hello, my hola my friend how are you, how are you? hey again Chacarita Bravo. San Martin all the people that is following me now have more fans we have more fans all together and uh, yeah that is Evita and if you come from the south to the north you will see Evita smiling welcoming the well the working classes let's say not the poor people but the working classes which is a very big difference uh, if we talk about the north which is famous because of the richness let's say all right in here I would like to show you because they remove it but it used to be a uh, blind people light a bottom right so the people that has no sight can cross the street I recently find out that uh, our last president he was about to be on a project to put a lot of lights for the well uh, people that cannot see and he didn't well he didn't do much in my opinion um, but only 1% of all the 3,700 lights that we have in Buenos Aires are, uh, well, blind people friendly, unfortunately, unfortunately. And let me wrap up this tour. I mean, are you, are you folks tired? Do you think that I should be wrapping up? Let me know. Do you want me to wrap up right now or do you want to see one more thing? I can show you one more thing if you allow me to but we have 200 meters we have almost two blocks to get there and I would like to read your comments I would like to see uh, well if you are having a good time over here and I would like you to write right now if you can which tour do you like me to prepare I can show you, for example, a few neighborhoods of Buenos Aires because we have 48 different neighborhoods in Buenos Aires. One of them is called Montserrat. And Montserrat is where the old town is, including the beautiful, uh, well, Plaza Dorrego and the neighborhood of San Telmo, where tango was actually created in brothers, <laughs> in brothers with male people uh, dancing and singing the, uh, the, the tango. So let me know, are you tired? Can I show you one more thing? As we are about to see one of the cheapest pizza places in Buenos Aires, uh, probably in the world. <laughs> it's called Ujis. Can you see the sign over here? It's only 299 pesos for one big pizza. And ladies and gentlemen, I am talking about <laughs> less than two dollars. <laughs> less than two dollars. So you can imagine how poor is that pizza. But when I was younger, I would, <laughs> I would definitely go for that and drink a Quilmes beer because, well, I mean, I have a lot of things I would like to share with you, like what we drink, what we eat. And the Quilmes is the most popular beer as we see one of the tango shows, famous tango, it's called Tango Porteño because Porteño means the people uh, besides the port and all the people that are born in uh, the city of Buenos Aires, which is the capital city of Argentina, we are called Porteños, the ones that were born besides the port, all right? <laughs> Thank you, okay, one more, one more, okay. You, you, you ask me for one more, I will give you one more, and we are about to get there. I told you that Buenos Aires is, well, we breathe art in here, we breathe creativity, and we love theaters. It's one of the cities with more theaters in the world, actually the top five cities in the world that has uh, theaters, the more amount of theaters per capita. Not to brag, but also Buenos Aires is the city with more bookshops per capita in the world. 
Do you know more records? Because we Argentinians can beat a lot of records. I tell you, we have more psychologists per capita in the world. The women of Argentina are the ones with more plastic surgery in the world. All right? We, <laughs> I can, I, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But the purpose of my stop is to show you this. Talking about theaters, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Theater Colón, one of the most beautiful theaters in the world and considered one of the biggest and one of the best three theaters in the planet because of its acoustic. You can visit the Theater Colón. I hope that all of you over there, uh, after this pandemic, finish hopefully soon you can come to Argentina you can come to uh, Buenos Aires and just give me a call I will give you all my details I will give you uh, everything in just a minute but I would like to tell you that my grandfather uh, he immigrated from Sicily and he loved classical music although and I have to tell you which team I support now <laughs> Although I am a fan of River Plate, um, my grandfather was a fan of Boca Juniors. He always tried uh, to change my, well, the, my, my, my taste of football and to move my passion to Boca, but he couldn't. I'm a fan of River Plate, but he, um, with my brother Andres, will come, would come here and we will listen to classical music. We will all cry as we can see someone with the Boca Juniors t-shirt about to cross the street as you can see how important is soccer to us and every time I, I come to the Theatre Colón I really want this to be open I know someone posts Le Luthier I love Le Luthier thank you, I will definitely prepare something around Palermo maybe something around Caminito, I would love to go to Caminito again and prepare something really, really special for you. And in order to start wrapping up, uh, I would like to thank everyone. Everyone that um, tune in to this tour. I would like to thank all the people at uh, Sandeman Live Tours. Um, let me change the screen because I talk to you now that we are a little bit away to all the people. Um, I'd like to thank also uh, to the Five Cousins for giving me this opportunity. You can check online thefivecousins.com. We are on Instagram, the Five Cousins Travel uh, over there. I am Gabo Candal. I was your host and I love to show you one more thing, but I cannot find the spoon. Ah, here spoon what we do what we Argentinians do with the spoon I show you right now because I just bought it Argentinian invention and we have a lot of Argentinian inventions I can name something I can name some of them you are not going to believe probably any of these Argentinian inventions that I'm going to tell you we invented the radio broadcasting we invented the animated cartoons. Actually, the, the, the person who invented it, Mr. Kirini, he inspired Walt Disney. And when Walt Disney, um, when Walt Disney created his first long motion picture, which one was it? Come on, the people of the States, you should know. Bambi, in the year 1930, if I don't remember wrong, he was inspired in this artist, the Argentinian artist Kirini, and he was also inspired in Patagonia for that movie. Not in Ushuaia, and I promise I was going to talk about Ushuaia before eating and trying with you this beautiful Argentinian invention, but more. The fingerprints. We invented the helicopter. Oh yes, oh yes, yes. We, we didn't actually create it, the Chinese did, but we make it fly. We make the helicopter fly. Another thing we invented, we invented the uh, disposable geringe, we invented the uh, cane for the blind people, we invented the lights.
for the blind people, unfortunately, as I was telling you guys before, they are not, uh, not even, well, they are very, very difficult to find. We invented the bus, and my other grandfather has a little bit to do with that, but that's for another tour. We invented, well, and the list goes on, oh, we invented the rollerball pen. Ladies and gentlemen, imagine you are in Buenos Aires and you feel like after an empanada, you feel like something sweet. We invented, yes, we invented dulce de leche. We invented dulce de leche. Don't worry, Marina, this is going to be another tour of Buenos Aires. Thank you, Liana. Oh my God, thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Jill. Oh my God, for those words. That makes my day. Thank you so, so much. Um, thank you for all the people that are, that are donating. Thank you so, so much. I just see like everyone is donating, donating, donating. You have the link if you want to collaborate with, uh, with, well, this tour guide that is unemployed for more than one year now. And uh, we are welcoming you to all the Sandman live tours and the project. But without further ado, because I told you about the inventions, let me put my gimbal over here. Otherwise, I will do my uh, a mess. Can you hear me? Can you see me? All right. Sorry, but some people, it, you are going to be a little bit jealous, especially Germán Fernández. You are going to be a little bit jealous about that. And this is Dulce de Leche. On top of that, I brought a brownie cookie. Look, brownie cookie <laughs> with dulce de leche. This is something, thank you, Soledad, thank you. This is something that is amazing. And if you have any question, let me know. Look at the consistency of the dulce de leche. It's not, please, don't call it milk caramel because it's not milk caramel. I will put you a, a yellow or a red card if you, call it milk caramel no it's dulce de leche all right it's condensed milk a lot of sugar and a lot of patience we say here uh, in English will be something like enjoy your appetite in uh, Argentina we say buen provecho hmm. I'm sorry but not sorry because I told you that I won't go into it during this second episode. We are like that. We love eating and I love how you... Mm, it's the sweetest thing you can ever try. It's so sweet that you can feel it in the upper part of your, your, your tongue here and then covering every, <laughs> every inch of your mouth quite difficult to swallow because I just make mix it with brownie and brownie has a big consistency like a mm, creamy so good dulce de leche not my favorite sweet thing in the world because it's too sweet I tell you it's hard to swallow as well <clears throat> but if you have a sweet tooth which I'm not you are here for a treat you are here for a treat Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Silvana, over there for all your comments. Thank you for uh, all the people from Turkey that that were uh, joining, that were uh, walking with us. Uh, thank you, the people of Istanbul. Please, for the last time, tell me where are you from, and I will say goodbye to everyone now, wrapping up this fantastic, amazing tour. Thank you for joining uh, this Thank you, Emilia, and really, really, I'm, I love what I do. Uh, I love to, just to show you around, not only my city, but every city. This is what the Five Castles and Chris Sandeman also want. Our vision is to keep tourism alive, and we couldn't do it without all of you. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for engaging in this fantastic tour. If you are watching this um, recorded episode, please write some comments. I promise I will uh, definitely uh, answer all of your questions, all of them. And Ushuaia, the, we call it the culo del mundo, which is the ass of the world, and is the, well, the closest getaway to Antarctica. 
one of my favorite places because of the people. I have my family there, I have friends that I consider family over there. Let me know, Diana, when you come to Ushuaia. I would love to be there. That's actually one plan that I have after I get married. So, fingers crossed that I, I myself and my fiancé can, can get married soon, hopefully. And, well, thank you uh, to anyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you. Uh, the churrasqueria style, yes, I do enjoy that, but that's a Brazilian tradition. Uh, thank you for that question over there. <clears throat> that's a Brazilian tradition, the churrasqueria and also the rodicio. We do have a lot of those over here. It's like they serve a lot of food with a, well, with a sword and they put oh, kilos, pounds of meat in your plate. Diana, we are waiting for you over here. Uh, Jericho, Oliva, thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, sharing uh, a little bit of the Sunday with me. Thank you, Dan, over there. Thank you so much. Oh my God, I cannot read all the comments because you you folks nailed it. There's way much more people that I, that I expected. <laughs> I'm about to cry. I just need to cut this because Croatia, my God, thank you, people from Croatia. I, I miss my friends uh, around Split over there. I miss my friends around Dubrovnik also. So big hi to them. Thank you, all of you. Thank you to my colleagues, Steffi and Freddy um, at the Five Cousins to support in this amazing tour. Thank you, Chris Sandeman and all the wonderful people at uh, Sandeman Live Tours and New Europe Tours. Fingers crossed, we are going to get, be back tourism will be back just think about it strong and that will happen i promise thank you see you next time bye